Next question is from Rabri. How quickly will you lose muscle mass when no longer working out with heavy weights? Can you maintain or build muscle when you only have bands, 10 to 30 pound dumbbells, and a suspension trainer? This, yes. This depends. So yes. It, it really does depend on, uh, on the person. Depends on the programming, if too. You're, yeah, if you're, first off, you have to have a good workout. So if you have a crappy workout, I don't care if you use heavy weights, light weights, bands, body weight, it's not going to work very well. So that's number one. Yeah, if you're following what all the Instagram influencers are doing right now with all these weird- <laughs> Good fucking life. Yeah, yeah. Jumping exercises and lifting couches and doing things with your chair. Just If you're doing ridiculous stuff just to get a sweat like you're losing muscle it's you are it's coming you are but <laughs> let's say you always train with heavy weight let's say you've been doing it for years this is what you do and now you're forced to be more creative you have the light dumbbells you have bands you have body weight sometimes a change just the change with good programming actually produces yeah. better results you know what i for years i trained super super heavy weight all the time because that's what was supposed to build the most muscle when I switched to lightweight and higher reps, I actually built more muscle. Mm -hmm. And this, this has happened time and time again. Just because it's, for, for it's novel. Right. And, and honestly, somebody who lifts heavy weights all the time and like trains more more like a power lifter and is now forced to do body weight, TRX, or bands, and all of those things are things that are completely foreign to them normally, mm -hmm. has a really good chance to actually building muscle. And even if you lose a little bit of strength, right? That, that, and that wouldn't be weird. It wouldn't be weird to not be heavy squatting and not be heavy because don't forget there's the skill part of the of 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 the movement too that that is required there and that you lose because you're not doing it as much anymore. So you might see a slight step back when you get back in the gym, let's say three months from now. But and I think Sal addressed this the other day. But how quick you'll gain that back, and then the likelihood that you'll progress beyond that because you've trained your body with this novel stimulus over the course of this one or two months that we're out. That's right. You could see huge benefits. That's right. Well, and I think too, and I bring up programming because I think a lot of people look at this as like an accessory lift stuff, right? Like this is like novel, it's cool, it's cute, but there's a way to really progress. And, uh, you know, like gymnasts do a fantastic job of this. I remember like for a whole year, I was like training with just body weight and trying, you know, my best to take an exercise and then uh, intensify it somehow, whether I'm adding gravitational forces by by, you know, increasing demand through the angles or, you know, I'm holding in specific poses and I'm like adding intensity to the isometric portion. Uh, you know, my, I'm using bands. I'm using a really heavier band, you know, load for that. Uh, there, there's ways to progress in, in, in thinking in those uh, in that direction will will help you to not only just like preserve your muscles, but also gain muscle. That's from right. It. Now, let's say you do lose a little bit of muscle because you change the stimulus and it's just not as loud or not as effective as the previous workout. Okay. You're not going to lose a ton of muscle and whatever you lose comes back very, very quickly. It's called muscle memory and it comes back really, really fast. But if you're smart and you, and you have good workout programming at home and you're getting creative and you're addressing all the issues that you tend to neglect, here's what will probably happen when you go back to the gym. Maybe you do lose a little bit of muscle, but you've gained mobility. You've gained control. You've gained stability, maybe even gained a little bit of endurance. Maybe you're not used to doing higher reps and slower reps and that kind of stuff. You go back to the gym, go back to your traditional lifting, take your time, don't just jump right into it. The muscle, muscle mass that you lost comes back in a hurry, and then you go past your old uh, plateau. You go past your old limits because now you're heading into them with new skills, new ways of supporting your body, and better mobility. This, I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? For a lot of you gym fanatics that get stuck in the same kind of training, this and you and, and you now you're you're changing your routine dramatically because you're forced to. One of the best possible things that could happen to you, as much as it's it sucks, maybe you're resisting it. If you're consistent, you got good workout programming. Mark my words, when you're finally able to go back to the gym, you will look back at this and say that actually was a good thing that happened for my body because now I'm surpassing all the limits I had before. And sometimes we need to be forced. Sometimes, look, for I know for me, uh, injuries and pain in the past have forced me to change my workout program. And then when I come out of them and I do everything right, I always look back and be like, you know, that was actually a, a good thing. My stability is better. I break my old, I hit my old PR and I'm, I'm above it 10 pounds because I was focusing on all these things that I was ignoring before.